This is Coons Ford Turp Talk with Bruce Posner. 60 minutes of Maryland athletics and your phone calls at 410-481-1300. Now, here's Bruce Posner and Turp Talk. After you hear this chorus, Sasha, we, we are the champions, champions my friend. <laughs> Sasha, we got Sasha Swarovski on. Sasha. You know, what a boost in the arm to Terrapin Nation. What a tremendous, tremendous victory. And I know that they told me you flew home Monday, and I said he didn't need an airplane, right or wrong. Yeah, I think I'm still flying. Uh, it, it's, uh, it, it's an incredibly rewarding feeling. Uh, the journey this year had a little extra special story to it. And, uh, and as you opened, uh, I just, I'm just so grateful that we're able to put a smile on the faces of Turp Nation, and and you know after um, maybe a tough six months here at the university, uh, we're able to kind of uh, you know maybe celebrate something uh, of, of this kind of great magnitude, and and it's been wonderful to hear from people all over uh, you know what this has meant to them. So I'm I'm really proud to be part of that. Well, it was a great run, and it was as hard as it could be having to go to Duke, then having to go to uh, Kentucky. Kentucky, that was like thirty-two to three in goals there, and you, you know, there was no easy. There was never an easy road to the national championship. Got Indiana, that was and Indiana one. redemption, yeah. Yeah. redemption, and you beat them bad too. That was even better. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, no, it, it was it was a great story. You know, we started the year this year as, as uh, unranked, uh, maybe the first time in the last twenty three or years or so, uh, because of the way we finished last year. And but we always had a strong belief inside that we could be uh, at this at this point competing for national championship and be the last team standing. You know, we returned returned a, a good senior class and juniors and uh, kind of a veteran squad in spite of losing four really talented players to the pros last year. Uh, but then we went ahead and scheduled an incredible schedule, and we challenged ourselves, and we, we sat there and said we need to reset our culture. We need to re-identify what Maryland soccer is all about. And, and I told the players last spring and summer I believed in them, and I'm going to push them hard. And we, if we survive our schedule, then you know we could become unbeatable. And uh, it, it played out very nicely that way because you know we were at 4, 5, and 3 two-thirds into the season. Right. We're staring at the possibility of not making the tournament for the first time. And, and yet through that, and through that, I'll tell you, there was still an unbelievable belief in the locker room. Uh, you know, there, there was no panic by the players, by the coaches. We just knew at this point we need to start, you know, pitching shutouts and, and we need to start, uh, you know, getting, clicking on the attacking side of things. And we really focused on uh, what I call box defending and box attacking. In other words, the last 18, 20 yards of the field. And we really fine-tuned a few things and from that point you know I think we had a lot of shutouts obviously shut out every team in the tournament uh, but then we also scored in every game which we hadn't done late last year or early this year so uh, it, it was an amazing run I, I'm just uh, sometimes I, I I look back and I think well this is what you hope for but when it actually happens uh, it, it, it's really satisfying you are listening to Coons Ford Turp Talk with Bruce Posner. I'm Wayne Viner. Todd Carton, you have followed this team for years. You're our non-revenue expert. What do you have for us tonight? Well, I'd, I'd like to know, Sash, you know, you made, first of all, you, you just mentioned that, that the locker room was solid. Was there ever any sense with the two games that you, you lost unexpectedly late to, to late goals? Did the, did the team get frustrated? Did you have to do anything special? That's one. Uh, secondly, I, I'd like to like you to talk a little bit about the contribution of a guy who hasn't gotten an enormous amount of, ten, of attention, and that's Chase Gasper, who I thought uh, played uh, a phenomenal role for you guys this season. And then also about your, your decision to uh, make the change kind of in the middle of the season to use two center backs, which is a little unusual for what you've done in, in the past. Yeah, so... <laughs> There's a lot uh, there to unpack, I know. Yeah, 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 let me answer me in maybe a different order. Uh, first of all, Chase Gasper was a, a really instrumental player for our team. He, you know, he's our warrior, and when he plays, we're just a better team. And we're a tougher team. Uh, unfortunately, he's battled a lot of injuries and hasn't really made it past four or five games in a row. And if you look at his record, I think we may have only lost one game in, in his 20 appearances. 
So he means a lot to our team. And uh, when he got hurt the second time this year, we were really patient in bringing him back. In fact, when we lost in a shootout to Indiana in a Big Ten tournament, we kept him out of that game. Uh, he played about 30 minutes, uh, and from that point on, uh, you know, we used the extra time by losing the Big Ten uh, semifinal to really get him clicking. And uh, I thought he was absolutely fantastic in the tournament. And, you know, he's going to get a chance to, to go to the MLS Combine. I think he's got a future in the pros uh, if he can stay healthy. Uh, in terms of the tactical formation, yeah, I think you were referring to two defensive two, midfielders. Two defensive midfielders, right. one, Yeah, with one defensive midfielder because we, we, we are known as an attacking team and we like to press with, with a lot of numbers forward. Uh, but this team just required that. You know, we, we, we tried a couple of different ways and, and because of the hard schedule, it kind of showed me that we had to adapt had, and I had to be flexible enough to change that way. Um, and I did. And, and then we find a perfect compliment in there with Andrew Samuels, Eli Cronalli. So that turned out to be, to be really good. Uh, but in terms of the locker room, uh, th- this was a great locker room this year. There, there, there was never a time that the players didn't want to practice, that they didn't, you know, um, even after tough losses, they, they took in the information, they took in the stuff and just kept getting stronger. And about two thirds into the season, when we had a heartbreaking loss to Indiana, uh, it was just a point where you could sense the team said, okay, enough is enough. We now have to reward ourselves. We have to start closing these games out, and we've got to make sure that whatever it takes, uh, the, the, the we're going to find ways to win games. And we did that. You know, Late in the year, we had goals from our left back, our right back. We had goals from, from, from our center back in Donovan Pines, but we're blocking shots. We're, we're just competing in ways that uh, – uh, the Maryland soccer was known for. Uh, maybe we lost that over the last couple of years a little bit, and I think it's back. Sasha, the game I remember, uh, one of the games I went to, I think it was Ohio State, not a strong team in the conference, but you were crippled that game. And when I talked to you beforehand, I could sense the worriness in your voice. I think you were missing two or three of your starters. I don't remember who or what. Yeah. And I thought the way the team played that day dominated the game and, you know, won somewhat easily. It kind of started that run where uh, all of a sudden you were on the right side of the score almost every game. Yeah, it was senior night uh, that night, and I, uh, I thought all the seniors really showed tremendous leadership. And you're right, we're missing some key guys, but uh, we, we had depth all year. I think you saw it in the College Cup in the semis and the finals. We had great depth, and we're never afraid to put people – uh, in, in key positions and key minutes uh, of games. And I think that night was, was a good night. We, I think we won 5 nothing that night. That uh, was the first time that we had scored multiple goals and won a game. So I think there was a lot of belief and confidence after that. Um, but, you know, we've always had really good depth, and, and I, I give a lot of credit to the way our, our players support each other uh, throughout the season. I, I thought this was a good year where our entire team put the we in front of the me in the equation of being a good team. At some point, although you are you are the best speaker I've, at the Maryland events, when we go to a Terrapin on tour event, Sasho's always the highlight. We love listening to you, and you give credit to everybody. But at some point, some credit has to go back to you. 2005, 2008, now you have one more, 2018. What's it mean to you 10 years later and then I have a poll question for the guys. But, Sasha, please go ahead. Yeah, you know, when I got to Maryland, I wanted to create a program that was excellent all the time. You know, when we get together, we say the word excellence, which, which, which that means you have to stand the test of time. Um, you, know, we've, we, you know, we've now been to college cups in three different decades. We've been there in the 90s. We've been there in the 2000s. We've been there now in, uh, uh, in, in the you know, second century of the, uh, the second decade of the 21st century. So, that brings a great deal of pride to me that, that we've been able to be consistently contending for national championships. I think that sometimes is, is uh, a better statement of excellence than maybe having a two or three year run, uh, but then being, uh, you know, invisible for a number of years. So uh, that's what I really treasure out of all this is the fact that, you know, we, we always seem to find a way to uh, have a good sort of redemption story. You know, we, we're really close in 2012 and 13, uh, maybe a whisker away from uh, one or two championships. Uh, we couple couple of years we're in the elite eight or best record in the country, and things just don't pan out. 
uh, and then you have this kind of amazing run where things really come together and, and you're able to hoist the trophy. So uh, I think for me, it's just the, the consistent uh, excellence that our program is able to show. Listen, you actually look to me, I know you weren't, but you look relaxed in that last game. I mean, they showed you on the sideline, you were kind of leaning against the post, sitting there enjoying it. But when Amir missed that second penalty kick, there had to be, there had to be, you had to say to yourself, oh no, this didn't just happen. That was the first one he ever missed, right? Yeah, yeah, I think so. You know, it, it's interesting. Uh, it, it, it's, a, it's a good observation. I was relaxed all week, and, uh, and through the NCAA tournament, I, I was uh, coaching my team less than I have all year. Um, and, and that's the sign of a great team because at that point, your team has to become a player-dominated, player-centered, player-led team. And, you know, that's why you, you push hard early in the year and, you, and you, you, you make these demands and corrections and adjustments and all these things. And when you get to a point where, you know, Amar became the unquestionable leader of the team, but he had a bunch of lieutenants in his senior class and a bunch of fighters in his junior class and sophomore class, a bunch of winners that – all bought in, and, uh, and I tell you, it was just a fun group. It was a fun group. I mean, these kids loved playing with each other so much. I mean, they were they were out playing two days later because they were playing pickup because they just loved being together. And uh, it, this, this wasn't a, a job for them. This is an absolute love. Uh, it was just fun to see. Was was there a, a part of you that? kind of almost secretly wanted to play Michigan State on the 50th anniversary of Maryland's first national championship, which was also against Michigan State. We had that big game uh, here in College Park. Yeah, yeah no, I think that would have set up for, an, for a really uh, an incredible story because, you know, we celebrated our 50-year anniversary team. We brought all those players back. I think we had 18 of the 21 players back. We bought them rings had a wonderful celebration, but also laid an egg and got beat 2 nothing. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and then, uh, then we had a chance to redeem ourselves at Michigan State in the Big Ten tournament where we beat them. Uh, and they had also celebrated their 50-year anniversary uh, at the same time. So this would have been a great story if we would have played each other. Um, but at that point, you know, you, 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 you're, you don't care who you play. You just want to be in the final. <laughs> um, and uh, and uh, I thought, you know, for us um, – uh, it was it was a good matchup with with uh, Akron, and because uh, coming off of the emotional game against Indiana, it was nice to see somebody new, uh, which was which I thought worked out well for us. Uh, but you know, I have to give credit to Michigan State and Indiana, uh, their fans, their coaches. Uh, you know, we all stayed in the same hotel, and they couldn't have been more supportive of Maryland uh, all the way through, and classy and and, and elegant, and it kind of warms my heart to uh, to have that kind of. Comp- Competitiveness and yet that kind of sportsmanship from our two competitors. Yeah, you won't get that out of the ACC. That's that's me saying it. I, do. <laughs> I didn't say that. I didn't right. say that. You I said, said it. it. <laughs> you can quote me. I have to ask you. You know, I I know every father and mother there was so proud of the kids, but I know one guy, Donovan uh, Pines, his dad, who mm-hmm. just can't stop talking about his son. Who and Donovan is a. Uh, one of the leaders at College Park. I mean, Donovan's mm-hmm. dad is one of the leaders. Yeah. And he always tells me, well, Donovan's dream, I think, is to play for Liverpool or whatever. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Number one, does he come back? And number two, he seems to be to be of the Omar Gonzalez kind of caliber player who can play international ball. Is he, in your opinion? Well, uh, first, Donovan's dad, Daryl, uh, he is just a incredible person, a great father and an outstanding dean and a great leader at our university. So, uh, you know, to have him uh, support our program and be at all the games and supporting Donovan is, is incredible. Uh, Donovan uh, is, is a special, special talent. And he's, he's a young man um, who gets better every single day. You know, you can see it almost from yeah. beginning of practice to the end, he gets better. You see it from week to week, uh, semester to semester, game to game. And, uh, you know, he, he was really the best player on the defensive side of the ball in the entire tournament. Um, he shut down virtually everybody, and he allows us to play Maryland soccer because his recovery speed is incredible. You know, he's six foot six, but he can, he's the fastest guy on the team. He's got the highest vertical and might be the most competitive guy and, and takes the most pride in defending. Um, so there's a lot of good qualities there. And, you know, what's, what's really neat is, 
you know, I live in, in Columbia, Clarksville area, and they live about a mile from here, and I've known the family for, you know, probably the last 15 years. Um, and it's just a, a, a neat story of a local kid sort of emerging onto the national scene right in front of us, and he's got a massive upside. I think he's going to have opportunities, uh, Bruce, to explore professional opportunities. Uh, he's a homegrown player with D.C. United. I know that they will be meeting with him and, his, and, and uh, Donovan's family in the near future to discuss opportunities to go with D.C. United. Um, you know, he showed really well in Europe when we were there last spring, and there's a number of teams that have noticed him and are tracking him. So I think he'll have opportunities both domestic and abroad. And, of course, he's also a very serious student, and, and, and certainly he's got an open invitation to stay <laughs> <laughs> right. and, and, and play for us. So, uh, so but we're, we're going to be very supportive, very transparent through the process, and, and we'll see where it goes in the next week or two. All right, guys, I promised you a poll question. Here it comes. Who has the better scheduling, men's soccer or men's lacrosse? Bruce, well, they're Todd? both, they're uh, both brutal. Man. And I, I loved what you said after the game, Sash. All right, you and it's one way I see you and Tillman and Kathy and and Missy in the same ballpark, and that is, you play everybody, and you know you're going to rarely go undefeated with a schedule like that, and yet. You made a great point about how it gives you a chance to see where the problems are early on. And I thought that was just a great answer at the press conference after the uh, championship. Yeah, I think the last thing you want to do as a coach is, is be surprised by something uh, after your last loss in the NCAA tournament and go, oh, gosh, I didn't see that coming. Uh, so I think it, I think all of us have a similar philosophy in that, look, we, we want to correct some things. We, we want to see what's wrong. Um, you know, for me, as you know, how much of an advocate I am for the college game and how important it is for me to put people in stands and provide a good atmosphere, I also do it because I want to promote the game and I want fans to be excited to come to the games. You know, um, you know and every sport's got its nuances and, and every sport's different. Uh, but, you know, I've, certainly for... For soccer, it's been important to me to go out there and play that kind of schedule. Uh, Sasha, you know, I'll just say about Donovan Pines. I can tell you, watching him from his freshman year to now, as a as a freshman, he he, you could see he was very athletic, but he never looked like a guy who was necessarily going to uh, make the, the the jump to being able to play internationally, and and that's a credit to him and to you. But I also want to say, you know, talk a little bit about Dane St. Clair. I mean, he's the la- latest in the line of, of some incredible goalies between uh, Cody Niedermeyer and Zach Steffen and coming forward. I mean, you know, that, that's a, a pretty incredible string over the last seven or eight years. Yeah, I think both of them are good stories for coaches and parents and players. Uh, because as you mentioned, you know, Donovan... He wasn't ready to be a full-time starter as a freshman for us. You know, he, he, we got him into games. We, 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 we needed to sort of bring him along in, in the right way so that he's prepared and that he has small successes and maybe small failures to learn from. Um, and we brought him along, you know, I think a very good way. And I think Donovan and his family and the whole team appreciate that. With Dane, uh, also the same thing. You know, Dane was a really talented player to come out of Canada. He came here and he just wasn't ready to start. Uh, Cody Niedermeyer. Uh, was more ready, who had sat on the bench behind Zach Steffen for two years, and he was ready to play, and he was the right guy to help our team. Uh, and Dane, you know, could have chosen the transfer, be frustrated, you know, quit, all of those other things that sometimes kids do, but he stuck with it. He stuck with it. He believed in the program and the process, and, and then he got his chance the last two years. And like Donovan, you've seen him get better and better every game to, to right now. I think he's, he's the most highly rated goalkeeper coming out of college this year. Um, even though he's a redshirt junior, there's a good chance he's going to be offered a, a very nice contract with MLS and a good chance he'll go. And, uh, you know, when these kids win a national championship, um, it's a little bit easier to let them go. Yeah, th- mm-hmm. there's no doubt. Look, I know one thing, six foot six, I think Omar Gonzalez, and then you repeat it with Donovan Pines. There's a message there, I think. All right. <laughs> Well, we also had yeah, we had uh, Alex Cornali in there in the MLS. We had Clarence Goodson in there. So, so it seems like we we have a history of developing six foot five, six foot six special center backs at Maryland. You know what's <laughs> great about Donovan Pines, and then I'll, we'll let you go. 
Here's a guy, was that his first goal ever from the ground that he scored against Indiana? Uh, he scored against UMBC on a rebound uh, when we played at UMBC, uh, I think, a year ago. Um, I'm not sure if it was one or two years ago. My, my mind's racing. You want to um, forget? I know you want to forget that game, yeah. right? That's, well, no, that well, was a tie. Well, well, that we, game was a no, tie. No, not that one. No, this, this one we tied. This yeah, one the tie game, game at UMBC yeah. was a tie. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so he scored there, but uh, but yeah, you know, he, he's you know he's, he's he had two very important goals for us this year and a couple of. Uh, Assists as well, and he's he's become a threat now. You know, his heading has really improved, and and that's that's got another level to go. And I I'm excited to see when when he puts it all together. But before we let you go, Sasha, I just I just want to personally thank you. Uh, I hope you were surprised by the group that greeted you at the team house a Monday night, and I you know I was in that crew, and and I just want to mm-hmm. thank you for. Uh, being so accessible and and passing the tr- the trophy around, I think everybody got a great thrill out of that. Well, you know, I I, uh, I take great joy in uh, in thanking our fans, and I really appreciate what they do and the commitment they show. And I thought it was really important to give them the opportunity to put their hands on that trophy because they're a huge part of our success. And uh, you know, to have you know over a hundred kids there from the students and and obviously uh, some media and parents. It was just great because it's it's eight o'clock on a on a Friday night, you know, right before exams. Oh, excuse me, on a Monday night, right before exams, and uh, that was a great sign of respect. And we want to show them our respect as well. Well, Tuesday night, the fans went absolutely nuts when they showed the winning goal on TV and the fact that you were champions. And I know there'll be one basketball game where you'll be there at halftime, and, and you right. you'll feel it from the crowd. But Sash. There's nothing like being champions, and there's nothing like being a champion guy like you are. And uh, bless you, it was great for Terrapin Nation, and it was great for every Maryland fan there is. And uh, thank you and the team for such a gutty, tremendous performance. And I'll be honest with you, when you were 4, 5, and 3, I said to myself, you know what? Maybe this is the year we give Sash the year to say, all right, we didn't make it this year. And yeah, if you would have yeah. told me that you're going to go 9-1-1 one, and one the rest of the way, I said there's just no way. And it shows you what I know about soccer. Well, you know, it, it, sometimes the journey and the adversity makes it that much more rewarding. And I think right now all of us uh, are connected with our program, you, know, you guys, myself, the players, fans, uh, I think uh, uh, are reveling in the fact that, uh, hey, Terrapins, we, we don't quit. We fight on. We go forward. Uh, until the last uh, ball is kicked, and thankfully we were the last ones to to be standing this year. Hey, congratulations. That wraps it, and uh, we'll see you out at the Hoops games. And uh, okay. enjoy your championship. You earned it. The team earned it. And you said it. You deserve to be where you're at to the team. And it was awesome. Thanks, gentlemen. We'll see you at the Hoop games, okay? Okay. All sure. right. Bye. This is Bruce Posner. We've been talking to Sash and – We're all sitting here with big smiles on our face. I don't know what else to say. Back in a few minutes here on CBS Sports Radio 1300.